Hello, everybody, and welcome to example one on page 11 in the workbook. And this is the first example of a situation where they're asking us to find a formula for a linear function. Okay, let's, let's read this problem together. So they're telling us that an airline sells discount fares and regular fares. We're going to let D represent the number of discount fares and F will represent the number of full regular fares. And we'll let capital R be the revenue. Okay, so in this situation, they're giving us this function in the form of a table. It's a table of data. Maybe the first question that we could throw out there for a discussion is, how do we know that this function is really linear? Okay, if we want to if we want to use the formula for a linear function that we talked about above, we really need to know that. Okay, and so remember that linear functions have constant slopes once you pick a, a, a constant direction. So for example, if you go down every column of this table, notice 0, 8, 16, 24, we're going up by 8, jumps of 8. Okay, there's a distance of 8 between all those points. Same thing for the second column, 24, 32, 40, and 48, they're all separated by 8, and you can check the last two columns, that's also true. So what we're discovering is that in the D direction, we're getting equal spacing by units of eight. That's an indication that our, that our slope is not changing in that direction. Okay, so let's start by actually calculating that slope. Slope in the D direction, okay, which is going down the columns. That's gonna be the change in revenue over the change in D. And to calculate that slope, we'll just pick on two points, zero and eight. And um, we can see that the revenue changes between 8 and 0. And then how much does D change over that same interval? Well, we're going from 0 to 100. So that's going to be 100 minus 0. And if you do the arithmetic there, 8 over 100 is 0.08. OK, so we've just calculated the slope in the D direction. If we go up to the formula that we derived up here, you can think of that 0 0.8, 0 0.08 as being the M in that formula. Normally that's the slope that goes with x, but d is the variable name that we've got. Okay, so there's m. All right, let's 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 just maybe erase what we've written, just so our diagram doesn't get so cluttered. What about in the f direction? Okay, so what if we were to read our table from left to right? Okay, well, there, Notice that if you sort of read off your values, 0, 24, 48, and 72, those are also equally spaced. There's 24 units of space between each of those. And move on to the second row, same thing. 8 plus 24 is 32, plus 24 is 56. We're getting that same equal spacing. So the slope in the f direction is also constant. And that's going to be the change in revenue over the change in F. Okay, so to measure that slope, we'll just pick on a couple of points moving horizontally. So our revenue goes from 0 to 24. That's going to be 24 minus 0 over the change in F is going to be 100 minus 0. 24 over 100 is going to give us 0.24. And okay, that's the number that we're calling N, the slope in the F direction in this case. Okay, and we already made the observation that the slope is constant in the d direction and constant in the f direction. That's how we know that this is a linear function. Okay, so remember what we're after here is a formula for r. Okay, and the formula that we're going to use to find it is sitting up here. We found the two slopes, the m and the n that are circled. What's the other piece of information that we need? Okay, so in addition to the slopes, we also need a point. All right, so let's use the table to write down a point that's on our, on our curve or on our surface in this case. Okay, you can choose any point that you want, but how about choosing a really easy point? Okay, so 0, 0, 0, where everything is 0, that's really nice. Okay, so those are going to be the values of for d, f, and r, using the notation up here, x naught, y naught, z naught is just going to be d naught, f naught, r naught, because those are our variables. 
And we chose the nice point of 0, 0, 0, just because those are nice numbers. All right, well, we have enough information then to write down the equation. Okay, basically, we're just going to copy down this formula that's sitting up here. The only thing we have to remember is that we're not using x's, y's, and z's. We're using d's, f's, and r's. Okay, so this formula is going to look like this when we fill it all in. Okay, and last step is to just go ahead and fill in the values that we got. So R0 is 0, we can see from our choice that we made there. M we calculated to be 0 0.08. Um, let's see, D minus D0, and D0 is sitting right here. And F0 is also 0. Remember that nice point that we chose. All right, and if we simplify that a little bit, we got a lot of zeros that we don't really need to write. We're going to get 0 0.08 times D plus 0.24 times F. That should be our answer. That's the formula for this function. Okay, now we're done with this problem, but one question I want to throw out here is, could we check that answer? Would it be possible to check our answer? Okay, well, if this is an accurate formula, then we should be able to plug in any number for D and F that we want to and confirm any number in the table that we have. So let's just pick on one. Okay, maybe the 96 here. So that comes from these two values of D and F. If we plug in 300 for D and F, we should get out 96. Let's see if that really happens with the formula that we came up with. Okay, so... 0 0.08 times D, which is 300, plus 0.24 times F, which is 300. Okay, and you can take out your calculator, actually do the arithmetic and confirm that when you do that, what comes out is a revenue of 96. That agrees in our table up here with the 96 that we have here. And if our formula is right, you should be able to carry out that experiment with any point in the entire table.